Welcome everybody to the Let's Build a Network series. I am very excited because this is the last video in our Let's Build a Network series and we came a long way from physical cabling to setting up the basic configurations, adding VLANs, configuring IP routing, setting up spanning tree and in the last video we even added the DHCP server to our networking infrastructure and configured all the DHCP relay agents. So really really great work done. Now at the moment we are going to configure, in this video we are going to configure um, leg P. So we are going to configure two physical links that will, that will act as one virtual link. So let me explain that a little bit. So we will have two physical links for example from one switch to the other switch which let's say both have a speed of one gigabit. Then we are going to create a trunk and that trunk will make it virtually one link that will act as a two gigabit link. So we have more performance and potentially if one link fills, it will automatically fill back to the other link. So we even have redundancy. So in this configuration here, you can see that we only do this to one single switch, but with the right proper stacking technology that Aruba uh, OS switches uh, are proposing, then you, you can do even setting up one virtual link to two physical switches which will even add more redundancy to your networking infrastructure. But that's not the case for this networking infrastructure and that's a completely different subject we maybe need to do in another video. But same technology applies that we are going to do here. So don't worry, you will learn the same thing. There is more or less a couple of ways in how you can configure trunking. One is a non-protocol version called trunk on these switches. The other one is where you're going to use a, a, a protocol called link aggregation control protocol. And you have a dynamic version and you have like a static version. We are going to use the static version. And I'm not going into all the different details because that's a video on its own. Maybe it's a good idea to do that in another video. But the main reason why I'm using static is because I want to control the VLANs that go over these um, these trunks, these like piece, these virtual links we are going to create. And with a dynamic, it will be part of the default VLAN and you can control the other VLANs with GVRP, which maybe is another video on its own. That's why static, I also see static used the most in most infrastructures out there. Yeah? Okay, so let's have a little bit of a look at the commands because we need to do some work. First, we're going to create the static leg P trunks on the 3810M. There is a thing that we need to see, as you can see here, is that these links will get a new name, trunk1. It also means that we need to assign that virtual name to the right VLANs in order to keep the connectivity in our networking infrastructure. That's why here I am connected to the serial port because I will lose connectivity. Here I am connected to a telnet session which will be fine uh, as we start configuring. Yeah, so you will see and I will uh, dive in the details. So trunk one will be the link connecting to the 3500. Trunk two will be the link connected to the 2920. So let's first configure the 3810 because that's where we need to configure both trunks. Let's go into configuration mode. Let's go trunk 45 to 46. We call that one trunk one and we do leg P. Let me show it to you. The trunk is the non-protocol version and the leg P is the 802.3 AD link aggregation protocol. Yes? Okay, that's what we are going to use, the static one. Okay, let's also configure immediately the other one. 47 to 48, that's the one to the 29, 20. Same command, only virtual link will be named trunk2. Now we need to add this to the right VLAN sets. Remember, VLAN1 wants untag, trunk1, untag, trunk2, and the rest of the VLANs were tag. So that was VLAN200. And remember also that not all VLANs go to all the different switches. So remember that some VLANs only on the 3500 and some VLANs we only had on the 2920. So in this case, VLAN 200 will be trunk 1. VLAN 210 will also go to trunk 1. 
uh, sorry, need to go to tagged, trunk one, and then uh, VLAN 210 will also go tagged to trunk two, and VLAN 400 will also go tagged to trunk two. So let's save this configuration. Okay, so that's saved. So now let's see. We can use the show trunk command. You can see, and we can also use the show lag p command. Okay, some of the ports are up, some of the ports are down. And let's go and start configuration here. Okay, um, this is the 3500. Go com t. And on the 3500, let me go in. I already wrote it down. As you can see, we're going to create a trunk on port 47 to 48. Trunk 1, lag p. There we go. We need to add VLAN 100 untagged. We need to add VLAN 200 tagged on trunk 1. And we need to add VLAN 210 tagged on trunk 1. Show. We can now show lag p. Okay, that port is up. It has a partner and you can even show the peer. Oh, we use the right command. We can show the peer. Okay. That's running, but we don't have both cables connected yet. That's what we do in a later version. Okay, let's change the console port to the 2920. Okay, there we go. We are connected. And let's configure the 2920. Okay, we're configuring a trunk 2324. That's called trunk 2, like B. As you can see, the names need to be the same. VLAN 100. Untagged, trunk 2, VLAN 210, tagged, trunk 2, VLAN 400, tagged, trunk 2. Right, ma'am? Let's show like P. There we are. Let's see if there is peers. Okay, there is peers. Okay, as you can see, 24, there is no peers. So let's see. Let me get a cable here. And uh, let's plug the cables in. Okay, now the cable is plugged in and see what's happening with the peer. Hey, as you can see, 23 is now going to port 47 of my peer as an active, and 24 is now going to port 48. Is that the same here? Show like P. As you can see, 47 is up, and then the other one for the 3500 on trunk one, we didn't use the cabling yet. So if you can also use show lag p uh, peer and then we can even show trunk 2 or sorry let me do it like this so let's see show lag p peer we can see that 47 is connected to 23 and 48 is connected to 24 and both are active active so we have a full running configuration in our networking infrastructure which is great so let's collect the last one, and that's the additional port for the 3500 to the 3810, so that we have a redundant environment everywhere. Dual links. So that is connected now. Let's verify the configuration, and you can see that's up and running. 45 to 47, 46 to 48. You can also do show trunk. You can have trunk one, you can see the different type, which is also still possible and can be very handy is the menu. And in the menu, you can see the switch for trunk settings. Um, and then you can, uh, you can edit them. You can go down and you can see all the different configurations here also, which can be very handy. Uh, sorry, let me go back to the actions. Let me cancel this. Let me go back to the main menu to the CLI. And if you do show interfaces, you can also see that you now have the trunk ports and you can see that the traffic is getting over both ports being balanced also, so that both ports are being used. So this concludes a great, great journey and I hope you find it very useful that we started really from scratch 
to a working uh, environment where you have multiple VLANs, where you have spanning tree, where you have uh, leg P configured, IP routing configured, DHCP servers. So this is a true, true network for either small environment. Of course, you can extend it as big as you want to. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, leave comments to the videos. Try to contact us. Make this channel an active community. Like us, like the videos, subscribe to the channel. And we are more than happy to create a specific video for you if needed. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in another series of videos or another separate video.